part two here. Come on in. All right. Here we go. You guys ready for this? All right, here we go. If you had trouble downloading the app, you can go to threadpodcast.org. It says get the app, you just get that. Or you can um, look in your app store or Google Play for Thread Podcast and get the app. Uh, We'll talk about it in a minute. All right, let's start. So I'm going to just play some videos in the background, kind of like I did last year. I apologize to anybody with ADHD. I feel your pain. If you can only focus on one thing at a time, you take your pick. It'll work either way, okay? Um, And so uh, I'm just going to start with some of the resources from past conferences. Uh, These are things that were made for the Lansing Church that helped the Lansing Church, a small church that grew, and they um, are made to help you as well. Um, And so the website is kingdombuiltresources.com where you can access all of this stuff. Um, It's super basic. It's not pretty. It's just a way to get you the stuff if you want to use it. Um, And so I think it's mostly updated. If it's not, reach out, and I can help you get something uh, more updated. Here's the church planner spreadsheet. Um, And this, uh, I think a a lot of churches use this spreadsheet. um, And uh, it's just going to play in the background there. And maybe you wonder, like, what does this have to do with finding Jesus, seeing Jesus? Uh, It's a spreadsheet. Uh, if you can get organized, if you can have the right tools, have a great Bible study series, you, you, you can have stuff on people's phones, that's more time you can use to help people see Jesus. Amen? Um, maybe some of the, the 25 practicals that Joel P. presented become more possible if, you, if you're organized, right? Maybe you can get out there and baptize a campus minister like Kevin Miller said we need to do if you're more organized, Okay? All of the things, they sound so different. I, that's my, it sounds so, it, but they all work together so well. Amen? That's the church planner. That's every month you get to think through your whole church before the month happens using the church planner, okay? And then, it, and then all your events, like you're not going to forget about an event. It's all there, okay? Um, and that's free. You download it. It's yours for your church. You can share it with other people, collaborate. Go with God. Um, you know, uh, I want to talk about this. So, yeah, so a lot of our churches use this. You'll see a list here. It's not even complete. But when, when Dave Bliley's talking about these baptisms in New Zealand, many of them study, used this Bible study series. Uh, he's already training people. He's been in Sydney for three months. He's training people to use this Bible study series. Um, I get nothing from this Bible study series except for satisfaction that people are using something useful, okay? It's as cheap as possible, and I just want to remind you how it works is the, the field guide's available on Amazon. If you look up Go With God, I think you might have to look up Go With God, Joel Nagel, which is good because Joel ne- Nagel needs to go with God. So um, it's there, or it's on the Kingdom Built site, or gowithgod.org. It's all right there. Um, this is a workbook. The Bible study itself is on the mobile app through your browser at gowithgod.org. And so, as, as Dave said, people can study the Bible with themselves, and then that guy that you think he could never lead a Bible study, oh yes, he can, um, because it, it's laid out in such a simple and usable way. And then when they're done, they've got all of their notes, so they can turn around and study the Bible with somebody else uh, so much more quickly than if we have to wait for an, another class and Training people is awesome. This does a lot of it for us. Amen? So um, I, want, I really want to urge you to check it out if you haven't. Um, just, just buy a few copies of it. It's $3.99. Um, it's as cheap as it can be. And, and use it a, a couple times with somebody. And, and just see, okay, hey, this thing works. And like, like Kurt's shaking his head like, yes. And they've doubled their church. Not because of this, but this is what they use because it's really useful. Um, It really works. I don't want you to miss out on it. Amen? Um, This is what the web app looks like, by the way. That should have been playing in the background while I was talking about that. But this is what people will see when they study the Bible. They'll click start the journey, and I'll click start the journey. And the journey will start. There we go. Um, And this is what the Bible studies look like. So it's personal, it's intimate, it's effective, um, 
and I really want to encourage you to use it. There are other resources at that Kingdom Built web, uh, resources.com, like summer devotionals, Christmas devotionals. I think summer and Christmas are just the best times of the year. But they're also the times of the year when our disciples are the most spread out. They're, they're on vacation. They're with family. They're doing all these things. And so what we try to do is every year have something to put in people's hands to keep the church united while they're away over the summer and then through Christmas, something that can even be like a gift. There's some examples of that um, there, and churches have, have bought these things. It's been, and I've gotten great feedback, okay? Um, you know, we did collaborative preaching, and the, there's details there if you want to see the videos of how we brainstormed together and preached together across churches, um, across time zones. Uh, it was awesome. You get to see other ministers not be so lonely. Um, all of this is there. Um, you get some great coaching from great preachers. John Lusk, Tony Singh. Um, it's good stuff, amen? All right, so this next part might sound a little bit like a sales pitch. Uh, unlike a lot of these other resources, there is a cost with this. Um, I'm not selling it to you. If, if there should, you should feel no pressure or obligation. Um, but what I really do want to say is I don't want the, the small churches to miss out on this, this, okay? Because it was made for you, but Dallas and Chicago found out about it and jumped on it, okay? And other large churches want to do it. In, in this morning, in that room, 200 leaders from Dallas were, were hearing about these resources that they've signed on to do for the next three or four years. But it was made for you. And so I just, I know you got to talk to your leadership, you got to pray about it, but I just, all I want is, will you really think about this? It's a, it's, a, it's a different approach. It's a different way of doing church in a lot of ways, but I really want you to consider what I'm about to show you. Amen? Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Are you scared a little bit? I want you to be a little, we should be a little scared, okay? Um, all right, that'd be good. Um, so I'm, this is the, the, so since I started my new role with the Disciple Center of Education, this is the, the first thing that we put together is this um, personal retreat devotional booklet called Encounter. Um, and this uh, is it's 15 days of devotionals preparing your heart to go on a personal retreat with God. And then it's, there, there's like a recipe book in the middle when you go on your retreat. You ever try to go on a retreat and you're like, what do I do now? Like, is it, so I'm just sit, I just sit in this cabin. There's, there are 14 recipes, different ways to interact with God and the Word in the middle. And then if you've ever done something like this before, Afterwards, you're like, now what do I do? Um, or everything seems lame. I was with God, and it was so awesome. Now I have to go to work? Um, there's 15 days of coming off of the mountain and how you can make a difference in the world. So it's a 30-day devotional with that, that retreat in the middle. Um, it's, I would say it's like the ultimate summer program. You give this to people for the summer and say, you know, you get to sp sometime this summer, take two days and just be with God and use this as a guide uh, to help you have just such an incredible retreat. It's a great thing. You could do it any time of year, but if you wanted to get it for your churches for the summer, we can reduce the price really, really low so that you can do it over the summer. It's also a great introduction to what I'm going to show you now, which is Thread. Um, and I didn't show you the slide for this. Um, there's Encounter. But let's talk about Thread. Have you guys heard about Thread yet? Have you heard about it? Um, um, I hear about it every day. Um, uh, <laughs> Dave uh, this morning said uh, that you're preaching and your kingdom kids, he did, that it shouldn't be lame. Um, and I liked that. I was like, yeah, it shouldn't be lame. Here's something that can help your preaching and your kingdom kids to not be lame. Thread, it's, it's like the culmination of all of the resources that I put together in the past and the vision behind them. Um, and I can't believe that I get to make content like this the app, the website, and deliver it to our churches. Like, I just feel like, really, this is what I get to do. The through line, how it works, the through line for everything is built off of a podcast by Dave Pachta, Hannah D'Souza, that I produce, that takes, is going to take anybody who listens through the whole story of the Bible, or as Jesus would say, Moses and the prophets. Uh, the first year is Old Testament, second year is going to be the Gospels, and then the third year is going to be the Spirit and the Church, the letters, okay? 
through the lens of telling the story, going through it slowly, and then spirituality, which, as Dave explained, is how you live it, how you live it. It's a great lens. If you liked uh, podcasts like Bema or The Bible Project, maybe you didn't like those, but you, you've heard of them, haven't you? Because our members want good podcast content. We're making this for us. And it's for more than us. Anybody can listen to it. But, but this is such an incredible tool and resource that we've put together. And so um, this is what I want to do, and I, I love this. I want us to use our imaginations I want you to dream with me, okay? And, and I want to talk you through what it would be like if your church um, went, used thread in your ministry. And, and I see Danny here from the Canadian family of churches has been, has been doing it. So you can talk, you can pick his brain. How does this work? Uh, Josh and Lancy, we're, we're doing this, and it's so good. Um, I need more water. My throat, I don't know, might not make it. We'll see. Okay. Um, let's imagine, okay? I actually went to a conference about using your Christian imagination. It was, like, dangerous for me. I came home, like, writing poems. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a poem with you, actually, later. Um, let's use our imagination. Okay. Um, I, want, I want you to think about your members. This is from the perspective of your members. Um, and I'm going to play stuff in the background to distract you, okay? So you got to pay attention. Um, during the week... Um, your members listen to a podcast on the subject of the week. Let's say it's light and darkness. That's the seventh episode out of Genesis, light and darkness. Um, then they come to church, and they're going to hear a sermon about light and darkness. But they've already listened. They're already primed. They're already more engaged in the message that they're going to hear because of the podcast. We did this with our John series. Damon and Ivy Brogue had a podcast. They already did on John, and people could listen ahead of time to what they, the, and, and that was just like an accidental, awesome coincidence, Holy Spirit thing. This is on purpose, okay? So they, they listen to the podcast. They come to church. The sermon is based on the podcast. And so what we've created is sermon starters. I'll show you. This is, the, this is what you get as leaders when you use Thread. Um, a, video, a video trailer for every sermon series. It's like four to seven sermons per series. And then all of these resources that'll just play, and you can pay attention to that, and it'll be awesome. They come to church, and you've used a sermon starter and a Zoom meeting with whoever else is preaching with us to craft your own sermon for your church that's on the same subject of what your people just listened to. That'd be, that'd be pretty awesome, but that's like just one part of it. Because let's think about this. Let's talk about the children. The children! The children and the teens who are in our churches. When I asked you that in that first part, are you helping your people see Jesus, how many of you thought about the children and the teens in your church? Are we helping them see Jesus when we download some curriculum from whatever? Because, and I'm not, I don't want you to feel bad about that. We just don't have the time. And the resources a lot of times in small churches. And maybe some of you guys are killing it, and that's awesome. The children, there's a full curriculum that goes with each topic each week. And so while the adults are hearing about light and darkness, the kids are hearing about light and darkness as well. They're coming home with a, with a coloring sheet um, that, that they can put on the fridge, and the, the parents and the kids are... Uh, can see that and remember some of the other resources I'll tell you about in a moment. Um, so, but, but think about for your member on the ride home. Hey, what'd you learn about in kids, in kids' church or kids' kingdom or whatever you call it today? Well, we learned about light and darkness. So do we. Already, parents and kids and teens can interact more with the Word of God. There's a, there's a liturgy, I think maybe it'll, it'll show or you see it, um, and a light liturgy, it's not like call and response, get on your knees, do, you know, do calisthenics and church thing, but just a suggested order. So it's not just the sermon that's about light and darkness, but whoever does your welcome reads a scripture that's tied into light and darkness. Um, the commun there's a communion prompt. This, the brother who did the light and darkness message, he, he got up here, he, started, he was like, there is darkness in me. And he had listened to the podcast, and he had the prompt, so he was, 
and then, and then Josh got up and preached a sermon about light. It, it, it's all, t- it gives the Holy Spirit so many opportunities to work on our hearts when it's all tied in. And it's all accessible, totally there for you. Built, ready for our small churches. Can you imagine what it would be like to have that immersive experience for someone in your church? Not just, oh, what's the sermon about this week? They know. And the kids get to learn the same thing. Here's the thing. It's not, uh, this is the the leadership portal. I had you guys download that app. When uh, church isn't just a Sunday thing, is it? We talked about that. You know, Tony talked about that. Church is like, this is the church. No, this, that's a building. This is the, we say, this is the church, this is the people. Is this, look to the side and see the steeple. This is the church, this is the church, this is the church. It's the people, and it's every day, okay? That's what we should do for that. Um, so what we've created is, we've created the Thread Podcast app. And so we talked about how awesome Sunday is. Your Sunday, it, this transforms your Sunday morning from oldest to youngest. It transforms the ride home. But then when they get home, there's a daily devotional, so we'll keep going with light and darkness, for that week seven. Every day, they get a short devotional in their, on their phone, in their pockets, in their purses. How many people in our churches are having quiet times every day? And it's not like a 30-minute, they can still do their own thing. But light and darkness every day. The, the next one is, is uh, becoming what it really means to be human. It means to be in a relationship with God. Every day, there's a devotional. Imagine preaching a sermon and handing out devotionals. Wouldn't that be awesome? You don't have to hand it out. It's on their phones already. In addition to the devotionals, I'm a, I'm a compulsive creator, so there's more. Um, there is a family devotional. We'll use the same light and darkness, family devotional. There is there's this innovative thing called conversation starters. My heart is for decompartmentalization. So that's a long word. Um, that just means our faith should be everywhere, not just on Sunday mornings. And so the conversation starts like, don't you ever think like, man, my kid's getting on the bus. I wish I could just say something so that they know that, that God loves them. And so there's a, a light and darkness. Like, hey, I think the challenge that week is to talk to your kids about, hey, look, um, look for light when you're at school this, this week. And, and before they go to bed, it's, it's on the app. Everybody in your, in, your fam, in your church can see, here's something I can talk to my kids about. Um, there is a midweek lesson on the app based on the topic. It can be scaled to a small group, an evangelistic Bible talk, or a midweek. You know how hard it is to come up with midweek all the time? It's there. And it, you don't have to do the midweek. Every member... Every small group leader has it on their app already. They've heard your sermon about that topic. Their group is ready to talk about light and darkness or becoming fully human or whatever the topic is, the Tower of Babel. That's, a, that's an awesome one. Um, all of this, that's, that's what Thread is, if you've been wondering what Thread is. And so think about, I, I don't want you to think about yourself yet, but think about what this does for a family in your church. And it, it, and it fits with the stuff this morning. It's like, okay, so we're going to bring all these, all, these, all these married couples to church. What are they going to hear when they get there? Well, they're going to get to jump in and hear the whole story of the Bible. When, uh, when churches hear about this, like Chicago, the Canadian churches, and people say, hey guys, imagine what your church thinks. You say, you know what we want to do? Over the next three or four years, we want to preach through the whole Bible. You know what people do? They go, yes, <laughs> that's what we want. It matures churches. Amen? Amen? Okay, it's good for our people. It's also good for you. The, the leadership portal that I showed you here, um, each ministry gets a code. Everyone in your church gets the code, and they get full access to the app, all of those resources, the Bible on it, there's a notebook. This is like a world-class app. Um, they get it all for free. Um, each series has the sermon starters 
but we're not into regurgitation. We're into inspiration. And, uh, and so before you do the sermon series, there's a lesson for you as a leader for every sermon. You integrate it. Don't regurgitate it. Integrate it first. And then look at, okay, here's a, here's a stab at the sermon. You take that sermon starter, you can use one line from it, one scripture, make it your own, or you could use a lot of it. And we have a collaborative preaching meeting before every, before every sermon series, so we get to share illustrations and ideas with each other. It doesn't have to be as lonely as it feels sometimes. We can work on really big stuff together. Amen? Amen. Um, you get access, as I showed you, to the sermon starters, to... Uh, the Kids Church curriculum, which has printables. This Kids Church stuff is so cool. It's made for mobile situations. You just need one bucket for your craft stuff. There's no cutting out things at night, anything like that. You have, there's an Amazon shopping list. You just make sure that thing's filled up. You got Kids Church. You click a button, PDF, prints, all the stuff, you hand it to your people. Plus, they get access to the portal. That's my phone screen. Isn't that cool? Um, that One Bite Pizza app is real. Okay, here's what the Thread app looks like. Just so you know, it's got the podcast player, and then you'll get to see some of the other resources as this plays in the background. Um, the other thing that's really cool is you get to send push notifications through the app to all of your members. And so you can say, hey, the family devotional this week is fire. Check this out, families. You don't want to miss it. Or, hey, we're, we're all going to try to do the daily devotionals this week, and we're going to talk about it at midweek. Or, hey, don't forget, listen to the podcast. It's really going to set you up for Sunday morning. This is what Thread is. Um, showing you the Bible there. Okay, there's two overarching goals with this. And this, I hope you're seeing that this is a, this, uh, first of all, I want to say this, is, I'm, I, I don't want to sound like a salesman. I don't want to be like, uh, this is a new product. Uh, for the last, like, 2,000 years, Churches have preached with curriculum. God and the Spirit and the Word have been immersive in the lives of Western civilization. It's why we have a civilization. And so this is nothing new. But for us, it's, it's, a, it's a newer approach. It's a different way to think about how you're helping your church see Jesus. Amen? Amen. Which, as we said, that's a day one, empty tomb, resurrection kind of thing to do. And so the goals are this, two goals. One is total church integration. That starts with you doing the leadership devotionals for yourself, taking these topics to heart. All of this helps you to handle the word of God more effectively, to be a better preacher and leader and teacher. But it also, and this is the second thing, is it helps you grow as a leader, and to raise up new leaders. So um, it's, the expectation is not that you would do a thread sermon every single week. We have guest speakers come in. We need to take breaks. So for, you do one, it's like a module. You do f the first series, which is four sermons. Take a couple weeks off. The second one is seven sermons. Take two months off and do your own thing. But here's what's going to happen. People are going to get used to, and they're going to really like, because it helps them, having daily devotionals and having the kids learn the same things and having parent devotionals. And so what are you going to do? What are you going to do when you don't have that stuff? You're going to help your leaders create these kinds of things. And so the kids' church curriculum, it's, it's almost done. It, it's, it's not just here's what you do. It's, this is here, it's how, here's how you make or someone in your church creates uh, a kids' church lesson based on what your sermon's going to be. And, you, and you're using the church planner, so you know what your sermon's going to be three months from now. You can, you, ha, you can give people time to work on this. You can make daily devotionals. And maybe you don't need to make all of the stuff, but some of that stuff. And then what happens is after, after three or four years, not only have you taught Jesus to your church through the whole Bible, but you've also changed the way that you do church. That it's not just, hey, here's a Sunday sermon or a series that I saw and, and copied. It's immersed. This is, this is what we do. We're the Word of God. Jesus is in every part of this church, at church, at home, 
everywhere. You can, you can do, if I can put this stuff together, you can do it. And Thread is it's a training tool to do church differently. Um, practically, here's how it, it works. We're, what, I, what I'm praying for is for a big group of small churches to go through to start Thread in March. Okay, I'll email the whole, everybody. You can sign up at our table out there. There's a QR code. I know we love, are we starting to hate QR codes? There's a lot of QR codes. Um, but you can sign up for the priority list, and we'll try to take as many churches as we can as we start this. Um, but that gives you time to check it out. You, got, you have at the app. You can, you can pay $4.99 a month to get all of the stuff, but you get the free version gives you the first series you can look at. Okay? Talk to your leadership group. I beg you, consider this. I, it's big. It's different. Please consider it. Uh, we, have gra- we have videos and graphics to help with onboarding, to help buy in. I'll send that stuff out to you guys. Um, and we'll, start, we'll give ample time so that you can complete the series before we start the next series. But I just think, what if, what if we were just, not only is it, you know, threading through the scriptures, but what if we were tied together with this content? With, with Jesus in the Bible and teaching in a different and exciting way. And so I want to be really upfront. It does have a cost um, because it costs a lot to put it together. Um, and so this is, this is the cost. If, if you just, on the app, want full access for yourself, it's $4.99. If you decide, hey, you know what? Our church is going to do it. We're a church of 50, and we're going to do it. It's going to cost us 200 a month. That's like one person's cable bill. Don't even put it in your budget. Just ask, get someone fired up about it. Um, ask them to cancel their cable, and they can pay for it, okay? <laughs> That's all it takes, all right? Um, but it's, a, it's actually a dollar cheaper because we just want you to use it for, for everybody in your church. And so they get full access to the app, and then you get all of that other stuff I mentioned, the sermons, the kids' curriculum, the children. You get it all. For $3.99, you get the push notifications, all of those things, okay? We wanted to make it this price. You can set whatever price you want for stuff like this. We wanted to make it this price for you so you don't have to choose between finally getting an intern or having this great content to teach your church, okay? You can figure out a way to do both of those things. Um, It's really going to make an impact. The small churches in Canada... Like, you know, you, you build something, you're like, I hope this works. Uh, I wonder what they're going to say. It has been effusive praise. It's transforming the churches that are using this content already. Chicago and Dallas, they've got big staffs, and they're like, we can't do this with these big staffs. But for this, yeah, we're, we're in. We're all in. And so you can visit our table. Get on that. I, I just urge you, just... At least get on the priority list. Hear about what's going to happen next with Thread. That's Thread. It's a podcast for our fellowship about story and spirituality. And it's the resources for leaders, for you guys, and members to help all of us see Jesus maybe in a greater way than we ever have before. And it's all been built for you and your churches. All right, so here's what I want to do to end out. I want to end by going from super practical. That's pretty practical, wasn't it? Like, we showed prices. Um, There's a spreadsheet. To extremely impractical by reading a poem that I wrote (laughs) that that bridges, bridges the first part of the lesson with the second. And then I'll end... And obviously, if you have questions, come see me, okay? Or go see Angie at our table. She's amazing. Um, The poem is called Emmaus Road. I am that unnamed disciple on the Emmaus Road, talking with a stranger that I, I feel like I should know. There's something so familiar as we walk along the way. I just have to hear it all, so I beg of him to stay. He had started in the beginning, and Everything he said tied the scriptures together like a sower with a thread. He said it's all about Jesus, 
who just died. What a joke. But then as we shared a meal, more than bread was broke. How had I not noticed? How was I so blind? The stranger on the road was Jesus this whole time. Before he disappeared, he had one more thing to say. He told us why we couldn't see him as we walked along that day. If you're looking in just one place, he said, you'll never truly see. Even on a Sunday morning, there's so much more to me. I'm in the creation story. I called Abraham my friend. I was there with Moses face to face from beginning to the end. I was there when the spies were lowered from Jericho's mighty wall. I was there when a trumpet blast caused them all to fall. David wrote his psalms as he went after my heart. And when the captives went to Babylon, it tore me apart. Now go back to Jerusalem. And when you arrive, find my brothers and sisters and tell them I'm alive. But don't just tell them the story of what happened in this room. Anyone can look and see that there's an empty tomb. To rejoice at resurrection is certainly not wrong, as long as you never forget that I've been here all along. You want to know why you couldn't see me in the morning's light? It's because the place that you looked wasn't exactly right. No one will truly see me if they just look here or there, but follow the thread through scripture and you'll see me everywhere. Amen? Amen.